Hello, okay, welcome to this week's Doctor Who review and this week's episode Smile. I have actually been planning ahead. I made notes during the actual thing, even though I can't see a thing on my screen there. Yes, I'm using my MacBox camera, I can only bother to set up the other camera because that's elsewhere. So yeah, um first off, start get to it. Straight away on the planet, you come across a character who looks like she's mixed between Princess Leia with those blue and buttons and Superman with the weave thing at the front. Um interesting character comes in Basically, hey, how's things going? Woman, don't stop smiling, don't be sad, but your mum's dead, and this person's dead, and this person's dead. What do you expect from them? To be like super cheery? Yay! More funeral drinks, really. So, yeah, it's an interesting episode. Um, Sorry, I'm just going through the diff different bits as I have it. Okay, so yeah, that was quite an interesting point. That may not be enough again, though. I don't know. Okay. Sorry. Just got lost there for a second. I made notes, but I didn't go far enough up the list. <laughs> okay. Um, on about the Doctor. He's in the TARDIS, talking to Bill. And Matt Lucas comes in and basically has got on for being the TARDIS. Why is it moved? Um, the oath not to take off world unless it's an emergency. She's supposed to guard in the vault. So, again, this vault... What's this oath? Who did he give it to? Why? A lot of questions here that hope does get answered. But so, this is really, really bouncy because I'm moving about too much. I'll try and be this right. right. But yeah, that's the big question. Who did he make the oath to? Why is he doing this? What's inside the vault that he's guarding? That's a big question I really, really want to know. It's going to annoy me all season. So yeah, so that's why he shouldn't leave Earth. But he still does anyway because he says, I can come back to the exact same place in time. Yeah, we all know that one. So, comes up with this idea of smile or die. Basically, be happy. If you're not happy, then you're not living. Smile or die, just imagine being at work. Always smile. Be nice to the customers. Yes, of course, I hate you. I ain't going to smile anyway. Yeah. Um, I look around really nice design because the design is really well for that. A very utopia type look. Um, very clean, which is what white often does give a look of. Um, had to laugh, look around, because Bill is always happy, she's always smiley. Finds it very interesting, Doctor's always questionable. I think that is quite funny, like the emojis kind of just fit the Doctor apparently all the time. It's just Doctor emojis. <laughs> um, food, that smells like fish. But it's a talgy. So yeah, a very interesting way to do it. Could be the future. I had to laugh though, when I love how she automatically sat down at the one that had one cube and there was the other one that had two. Then points out, why do you get two cubes? Is it food sexism? Food sexism is in the future. Fight for the rights. But it turns out we has two hearts, which out of everything in the world. Why did that surprise him more than the fact that he has a, a, a police box that is actually a ship that can travel through time and space? But he has two hearts, and that completely blew her away. Okay, so there's one more thing out the way for now. So yeah. Sorry, I had to go for it. It kept on going on about that they have a skeleton crew to set things up, which are now skeletons being broken down into fertilizer. Skeleton crew, that's now skeletons. Yay. Go for the puns. Sorry, really, really bad pun. Uh, so yeah, it was quite creepy when I found that one out. The skulls that were really, really, really badly done. Sorry. But yeah, that might have got a corner somewhere. Some of the CG was a bit iffy, but really the skulls, that could have looked really awesome. Doing his Macbeth, so Macbeth is Macbeth, but it was a Shakespeare moment. Mm, yeah, okay. So, um, tells basically, as the Doctor always does, stay in the TARDIS, you'll be safe there, which is usually the case. You can be safe there. It's gone... It now has broadband, so it's had an upgrade. Doesn't tell you the speed though. Um, go and watch movies. Does he have a new computer console moment thing where if I can go and watch them on, or does she have an app on a phone for it? Did she give him the password? Did he give her the password? Hmm. I don't think he did. So, Tardis now has broadband, as well as many other things. Um, and don't go on his browser history. What has the doctor been searching? What's it been on? I want to know what's on the Doctor's browser history. I really want to know now. So yeah, go back in, 
cool idea that the fact that it's all built out of robots, so it must be something at the beginning. Nice little history lesson about the Vikings, which brings us in the point regarding the spaceship. So they eventually find the spaceship and find it's unlocked. So they go in and find that there's many different interesting things in there, um, including a map that has a tracker built in that tells you exactly where you are. So that was really cool. I love how though later on she decides, oh, I can take a picture and follow the map, and it's like, yeah. But you already memorised it, haven't you, Doctor? Yes, figures. So that was quite a cool point, quite prominent and obvious kind of thing. Um, we found out with that weird old woman that's dead that grief really is a killer. The robots don't understand grief, see it as a negative thing, as something bad, and just basically kill everybody that has grief. So yeah, that's what you get for robots. They can't fully understand human emotion, but there again, what can? <sighs> So yeah, yeah, they solved that problem. Humans decide go to war with the robots. Doctor decides reboot, and that starts everything again. Then basically negotiate some sort of peace treaty and rent, which the robots are like yeah, rent money. So that was quite amusing. Hopefully we we'll find out in the future what actually worked, or whether they just killed everybody and just continued doing what they were doing. Um, yeah. Returns back, as always, the Doctor never, ever, ever returns back to the same place or time when he said he will. River Song gets away with it because she can steal the TARDIS and put it back in place without him ever realising it. The Doctor never has. Has he? I don't think he has. He's really bad at placing the TARDIS, especially when it's on a point where you're trying to prove to somebody, I can do this. It always goes wrong. Or is the TARDIS doing that? I wonder. So the TARDIS is having to send the Doctor where he needs to go, so it could be the TARDIS's fault. Or the Doctor just never have a clue how to drive it. We don't know yet. Everybody else seems to be okay with a book except him. That's life. So yeah. This week's Doctor Who. Um, I quite enjoyed it. I think it was fairly poignant on the usual idea of multiple species, peace, understanding, um, a new start. Um, Bill, again, has grown on me a lot. This, there's a lot of twists and stuff still in the story, and I think to come, and you know, things going to happen in the future. But yeah, I think it's building up to a nice, decent role, but I'm still waiting to see what happens. So yeah, possibly a strong episode, in my opinion. I think it did really well on the different points it needed to. I don't think it got overly boring. Um, it kind of portrayed the point that we all have that problem of we're stuck having to smile too much. People who know emojis probably like this episode more than anything else they might try to make it more relevant to people so yeah thanks for watching sorry for the belariness i will try to have a proper camera next time and i'll see you for next week's doctor who review which will be on the river thames back in london again in the old school that must do every season is that, is that daleks have to appear every season so does london wherever so yeah see you next week and thanks for watching bye